Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, another, well, this is another open conversation, uh, and I'm talking with Tyler Vela, and Tyler Vela was the uh, was the Christian, I think, apologist uh, that I debated a month or two ago uh, in Waco, Texas, and he said something interesting there, something that sparked my curiosity, and so we agreed to do a video discussion about that later on, uh, and that was, let's see how I can pull up what he said. He said uh, during our debate that what would falsify my belief is something like the ability of naturalism or atheism or any type of materialism to account for the existence of things such as laws of logic, objective morality, the existence of something from nothing, the fine tuning of the universe, specified complexity, where God functions as a simple explanation for all these types of things. And uh, and here to talk to me with me about that is, of course, Tyler Vela. And Tyler, would you like to say hello to everybody? Hello, hello. How are you? Yeah, sadly, we cannot figure out what's going on with the camera. He said uh, it seems like another one of those update things that has knocked that out of commission. And you know, your, your system is using the right camera, right? It's set to the right camera. You checked? Yes. The, it's the only only one that's there. It's the only one in the drop down. I don't. Oh, I well, don't know what's going oh on. Well. for those of you who are not familiar with uh, what Tyler Vela looks like, he's uh, six foot four, long, wavy blonde hair. And a, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a Fabio doppelganger. <laughs> there you are. There you are. OK, so on that on that topic, the, the first thing that threw me was that your statement was before we get to the, the, the things that you listed that you wanted science to explain and that, well i guess that's that's the first thing we're talking about since you said that atheism materialism naturalism by virtue of the fact that science it is forced to adhere to methodological naturalism that we can we can just call those things science right um well no um methodological naturalism just says this is the means by which we can use to understand some of the normative processes within the universe. Okay, like so is light, science you know? ever able to use anything other than naturalism or materialism? Um, it depends on what you, what type of conversation you want to get into within, you know, the philosophy of science. Um, it depends when you, when you start getting into cosmological theories, when you start getting into a little bit more of these, uh, you know, a little bit more of the abstractions, then yeah, you might be able to get, uh, no, you might be able to get back on you mathematical there. proofs and things like that. You said the three categories, naturalism, uh, which, which obviously science is going to be natural, uh, and um, materialism, again, mm -hmm. uh, and, and then, of course, atheism. In all three cases, you're not ever going to have a scientific argument wherein a scientist can ever posit that a god is the explanation for anything. They won't be able to posit God as a as a naturalistic explanation for anything. No, no, period. Just not in science ever, under any circumstances at all. Uh, I'm not sure that I agree with that. I think certain cosmological. Well, let me back up. Uh, if they are trying to say that this is somehow a a scientific explanation for something, then yes, I don't I don't think God is a is a scientific explanation of anything. So if they're doing that, then yes, I think a scientist may be able to do by via abduction may be able to do some type of sufficient explanation um, like certain cosmologists would do when they're dealing with something like fine tuning or when they're dealing with something like why there's something rather than nothing would be and they might be able to do something like that you I might then that. say well that gets into philosophy of science rather than you know methodological science which is which is fine i can i can grant if that for the sake of argument about, if we're talking about the, com the combination of materialism naturalism atheism hmm? that sounds to me like we're talking about science because there is absolutely no occasion ever period where a scientist gets to say this is evidence of god right i mean there, there, and when i say that i mean that there there's not there's no way to 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 uh there's no way to test for that and there's no way to falsify that right so if you make a if you you posit any explanation for something you have to have the the indication that that is the thing that's doing it it's not just that you don't if science can't explain something and this is this is integral to the discussion that we're having right now. If science can't explain something, that means it's unexplained. That does not mean that it's an indication of God. Do we agree? Well, on no, that? no, we don't. So it, it, this this is the difference. So um, naturalism. It, so this is the difference between something like um, methodological naturalism and philosophical naturalism, right? Methodological naturalism is the process where we can only use material or naturalistic means 
to try and attempt to explore the normative processes within the universe. Naturalism is a metaphysical theory that then is drawn from that. It's a philosophical position that says that the only things that exist, um, the only the only types of explanations that are that are even uh, the, the possible because the only thing that exists are naturalistic things. Um, that that's, that's a philosophical, philosophical position. And yeah. philosophical naturalism is significantly different than metaphysical natural, or excuse me, that, than methodological naturalism, because methodological yes, because naturalism they're... is concerned with the things that we can test, which means that they have to be natural. They can't be dreamlike. They can't be wispy, magical, in and out of reality kinds of things. Right. Right. Well, and, and, and this is where this is... case has never been a case where a scientist has said, we can't explain this, therefore God. Because that that is the definition of the, the God of the gaps fallacy. And that just I agree, which is which happen. is a fallacy. Yeah. And and I agree that's a fallacy. The, the the fallacy of moving from we can't explain this, therefore God, right? If if the argument is <clears throat> it's mysterious to us, therefore miracle, uh, that would be an in, invalid argument. And right? in, and and by go I'm sorry, go ahead. And by the way, that would be that would be just as fallacious as saying we can't explain this, therefore natural. Um, the, the, the only position you can say is we can't explain this, therefore we can't explain it. Right. That's and the most so you can get out says, of it. Nobody says we can't explain this, therefore not God. But curious, well, in your discussion, yeah. I mean, what you said to me, mm -hmm. which, which immediately uh, piqued my interest you know, significantly, was when you said that not only that what would would change your perspective or cause you to question your belief, but that would actually falsify your belief mm -hmm. was if science had an explanation for these things, which means that, that, that having an explanation equals no God. Well, transversely, then, then doesn't that mean that, that not having an explanation indicates God? No, because the my my position isn't <clears throat> having having an explanation qua an explanation, just having an explanation of any kind or any any valid explanation. Therefore, means not God, because I think I think God is an explanation of those things. the 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 argument that I the the, the statement that I made was if you had an explanation that invalidates the um the the transcendental or the metaphysical need for god uh a, as an explanation for those things would cause me to have some some major some major doubts about um my my certain my, my current convictions and my current beliefs um because right right now um because I, I I'm not a naturalist, I'm not an empiricist, right? I, I don't I, I disagree. You and I are going to disagree. I don't think God is a scientific question. Um, I think it's a metaphysical question. Um, it it would cause me to basically have every leg of 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 my of my current structures knocked out, except for maybe personal experience, which as as we discussed, or I think I was answering to to someone from the audience personal experience might be a self-warranting thing but it could personal experience doesn't really function i don't think uh, as a as a as a uh, any type of evidence that i could provide to somebody else um well at least not a very strong kind we might allow for personal experience for some things um but for something like a like a god claim personal experience might not be a very strong form of of, of justifying evidence that you can provide to somebody else okay well i'm gonna i'm gonna push back that on the other point that, that you say that God is an explanation of these things, clearly God does not qualify as an explanation for anything. I mean, under no circumstances. I mean, there, there's, there are requirements for what is uh, going to be a scientific argument. That is what we're talking about today, because we're talking about, we're talking about methodological naturalism, not necessarily physical, uh, philosophical naturalism. We're talking about atheism, which means that we're not going to include a God in the scientific explanation. And, the materialism again is ju is just a redundancy where we're just talking about material things there's not a way that we could ever say that magic was ever a part of anything so i mean there's there's no way there's there's no way to test for that there's no way to isolate it there's no way to 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 falsify it if you know if we were if, and we have to have a way to show whether something is not true 
right? And there's no way to falsify the God. And there's no way to incorporate a God as an explanation for something. There's no way to, in following the rules of what a scientific explanation is and requires, there's no way to implicate God as an explanation for anything at all, ever. And so, and at that and at that point, I, I would I would simply give the same pushback that I gave in our debate, wh which is effectively, well, that that's all that's all fine and well, but all you're doing is, is presenting a you know what what historically was logical positivism, which is now kind of crassly called scientism, right? You're 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 effectively saying the only type, the only type of knowledge that we can have, the only type the only type of explanation that we can have qua explanation there is there is there exists no other type of explanation there exists no questions um no realms of inquiry no no nothing that isn't scientific you're you're just as bracketing off you, everything else from the get-go as as i told you in our in our debate if magic was real there would be people who could demonstrate that there would be ways of demonstrating that and even if we couldn't explain how it works because it's magic that we would at least be able to verify that there's a there there. There would be a Gandalf or a Spock or an Obi-Wan or, or a, a Harry Potter who was going to be able to demonstrate that these things work and happen in some reliable way. Or a resurrection of, of Jesus. <laughs> but or, that's or, that's or resurrection of a whole army of the undead, which is another thing that the Bible talks about. I mean, there's there's lots of magical things that are going on in the in the scriptures and in various religions, and there would be ways of verifying that those things are actually reliably real. It would be able to be demonstrated. You would have faith healers working in hospitals, or patients would be wheeled into churches rather than hospitals, and they would be healed there by the magical healer just as reliably as any doctor can do. But we don't have that. So the excuse then becomes, well, that there's no, there's no, because it's supernatural, then there's no way to test for it, and there's no way, and, you, and we'll never accept when it's wrong. And if you can never accept any means by which it could be wrong, because God could always create illusory situations so that we have all of this evidence implying let's let's see you know, like like last thursdayism you know we could all have false memories implanted by god and we all think that we were born decades ago when really we all came into existence last thursday and all of these things are illusions just to conceal god's existence so there's no way to falsify it which is another reason that god can't be an explanation now if god were real and didn't create all of these illusions then we would have some indication to his existence. We'd at least have indication of some sort of a supernatural something happening somewhere, but we don't. And we do well, what, have we do have expressed rules for what right. qualifies as a scientific explanation. And God doesn't meet those criteria. Those are the, and these are not criteria that I set. This is what the scientific community sets, and what, and what philosophy of science sets. Not not uh, um, what was it? What, what was it? The, the 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 type of philosophy you keep trying to ascribe to me? Meta logical metaphysics. Positivism. Well, logical right. positivism. Yeah. Right. Which doesn't. I mean, I don't know. I don't know why everybody wants to wants to pin that on me. It's just because I say that you shouldn't be able to. You should not state something as fact if you can't show it to be fact. That's it. Other people think you can. You can just like just throw out your opinion as if that's the way that it is. And that's dishonest. And the fact that I say that it is dishonest does not qualify me as a logical positivist. If well, anything, it would, it would actually. So, would. so it, for, that, for, that falls into the philosophy of science, which comes after logical positivism and is is the current working model after logical positivism. Well, it's hardly working. So, so he philosophy here, so, of science is hardly working. Said, Let's talk. Tell no, me how I'm, well magic I'm, works. Uh, I mean, science actually I does. I don't affirm. Goals. I don't affirm magic, though. So, yeah. So, and, 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 and the end of your emails, all of your emails to me, end with blessings, right? Do you know what a blessing is? It's a magical enchantment. It's the opposite of a curse. It's a positive enchantment instead of a negative one. And enchant. So, when you tell someone to have a blessed day, I hear have a magically enchanted day because that is exactly what you're telling me. Well, this is, and this came up, this has come up, I think, in, in several debates that you've had, right? So this, this is, this is simply, and, and, I, and I'm trying, I'll sort of try to say this as respectfully as I can. This is simply question begging of, I don't like your terms and definitions. I'm going to use mine. And so therefore that's what you must well, mean by it. I can use yours. We will say supernatural. Yeah. The, the audience will understand <clears throat> that supernatural equals magical equals supernatural. They all get that. If you don't want to accept that, that's fine. I don't have to pin that on. That's fine. That that's just we'll, but, but that's, we'll stick so that's with the word supernatural. Man. And somehow yeah. you can you can wish people enchantments. 
and you can believe in curses and you can believe in the golem spell and all somehow that doesn't qualify as magic for you for reasons that are entirely your own and I don't care. But right. you know, we see it differently. It doesn't matter how you see it. But if but, you're trying to engage with, so this, this is where I would come back and say, well, if you want to be a reasonable person, if you're yeah. trying to engage with someone else's view, mm -hmm. right? So, so if you're trying to give an internal critique of my view, right, which you are, um, then you need to use the concepts and the terms as we understand them, Under right? If you say, if you say, I don't care what you, what, what concepts you have, this is how we understand it, that, that, that supernatural equals magic, magic. And that's just what it means. Well, okay. I mean, that's, yeah, that that's regardless fine. What you that's say that's here, my, regardless that might be how, here, regardless what, what, what leverage I want to give you, right? You understand that an enchantment and a curse are both aspects of magic. Right. You understand that both of that remains the case, regardless what we say about it. Right. Well, then you might have you could say, I mean, you could have guilt by association. Right. You could also say, well, you know, magical incantations use words. Uh, poetry uses words. Therefore, poetry is magic. Right. Just, beca well, just well, because I, just I because there are that, similarities that a curse. Do you, do you, do you doesn't believe in mean curses? the same thing? Do, you believe do I believe in curses? It depends on what yeah. you mean by curses. Well, the, the curses that are in the Bible. Do you believe that the cur believe in the curses in the Bible? I, I, I believe that God blesses and curses people. Yes. Okay, but you don't accept that blessings and 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 and, and that blessing is an enchantment. Apparently, you don't accept that. Fine. No. We'll just let that go. Curses. I don't think anybody argues that curse curses are definitely within the realm of magic. Even if you don't accept blessings as being the positive alternative to that, that's still that's still mad. But it doesn't matter. We'll 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 say supernatural and we'll forget the word yeah. magic whenever we're talking to you. Okay. Yeah, because so, again. Not the content. And I, I, I I get here, but I want to. But I want to go back to something that, that I found interesting. So you you said, I, and and you know, try. I'll I'll see if you can rephrase it. You said something like, <clears throat> uh, if it, something isn't falsifiable, it doesn't qual. It cannot. It cannot qualify as an explanation. Right. Right. Um, which, by the way, is why people call you a logical positivist. That just that 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 right, that's because, they're, because that's they're mistaken for verificationism, which doesn't apply in my case for subtleties that you're probably gonna, just going to miss and nobody's really going to care about. No, ver ver verificationism is something something is true and I don't subscribe to verification. Falsification is something can't be an explanation. Right, right. I don't subscribe to verificationism. Yeah. I also accept, as I told you in the debate, that I accept that we can also use logic as opposed to just pure empirical science. Great. Just so the, if you grant that though, then, so if you could, if you're granting that you can use logic, mm -hmm. right, then you're granting that I can actually use metaphysical explanation, right? I can use, and by metaphysical, I don't mean supernatural, right? The multiverse is a metaphysical explanation for the existence of the cosmos. Okay. Metaphysical simply means a, a grounding explanation that is outside of the natural observable universe, mm -hmm. right? The multiverse as the multiverse, would itself be unobservable and governed by different laws of nature than our own. We, we would not be able to observe it. We could only infer it as a type of metaphysical ontic foundation for the existence uh, of the universe. But regardless, right? that's irrelevant because we're talking today about whether atheism, materialism, naturalism, collectively, right. that's we're talking science here. Whether, but I'm, but whether I'm challenging your, your principle that, that God cannot be an explanation Oh, if, if God were real, we could, if God were real, we could show that, 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 that there was a there there, right? We'd, we, we would be able to we would be able to show the properties of God in some way, but we don't get that. What we get are excuses oh. for why we can't ever test God, why we can't right. indicate God, and why we can never falsify the God hypothesis. So if we it can't be indicated, indicated, verified, or falsified, it, it there's no way to show that it's right or prove that it's wrong that it provides exactly nothing it cannot qualify as an explanation do, and that's do you say the same thing about the multiverse theories do you think that those are just quack quack cosmologists i don't say that that's an explanation that's a hypothesis and it's not even a testable one so it doesn't really qualify as an hypothesis okay well the the, the thing that i want to get back to so because i think your the way you're phrasing it and 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 i know you don't like it i think you i think your your version of the falsification principle uh, is logical positivism. I, I'm not accusing you of verificationism. I okay. think you're false. All right. So I think but, you believe in magic and you want to pretend that, I, yep. that I'm a logical positivist. You're not well, going to be able to make that argument, but you're welcome to pretend that if okay. that's what you want. It doesn't matter. Well, here, here's because what I'm going to explain. I'm not a logical why. positivist for the reason I've already explained and you reject. Okay. So you want to call me that anyway. A lot of Christians want to call me that 
I get it because I don't because I think it is dishonest to assert baseless speculation as though it were fact, and that's what all religion depends on. So I say you can't state it if you can't show that it is true, and then everybody wants to call that verificationism, and bing, logical positivism. I'm well, just this, trying to be honest, and I think the people talking to me should be honest too. Well, here, here's here's why I think that that is that that position is in is uh, internally self defeating, right? It, it, it's reflexively self defeating. No, no, no. The 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 falsification principle that you rely on, right? Okay, so that you shouldn't state something is true unless you can show that it is true. And if you can't show that it's true, you can say that I think that it's true or that I believe that it's true, and here's why. And that would be honest. You, you, okay, you're going to object to that. I'm going to object to your falsification principle that you're using to what is defend my falsification that. Falsification principle. You said that if something could not cannot be falsified, then it cannot be a reasonable it can't explanation. Be indicated or vindicated, verified or falsified. There's no way to show that it's true, and there's no way to prove that it's false. It contributes nothing. Right. We right. don't know so, that there's anything there. How right. do we even determine? And, I, and there are rules of science that I did not apply. You know, like, like you can look them up in, in Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy on mm -hmm. scientific explanation. And it goes into the detail about what this is. And I'll make sure to put a link below. These are not rules that I made up. And they are not logical positivism. Okay. okay. This is the philosophy of science as it is today. Okay. The reason that you what? can't use God as a, as, a, as a qualifier is because, one, the, the, whatever you state about the explanation for any of the things that we're about to get into has to be a true statement. Okay. And you can't just assert things that you can't show to be true. You can't, it's not true because you say it is. Great. You get that? That's fine. No, that, that's, that's fine. The point that I'm getting at is that your own position is not falsifiable. So if How I were to ask you, if I were to ask falsifiable. You, okay. If you're, so you're, you're in principle saying that that God cannot be an explanation. It it, it the cannot be. Being, like, yeah. And yeah, if yeah, God yeah, were right. real, we would be the able to train. the right explanation. Yeah. But I get it. All that kind of thing. So so now I'd now I'm going to ask you what would falsify your statement? What would falsify your naturalism? What could what could what kind of evidence could ever be could ever be presented that could demonstrate? the existence of God. Okay, I'll, I'll repeat the answer that I've, that I've explained already once on this show and already mm -hmm. during our debate. Yep. If the supernatural were real, there would be ways of demonstrating that, right? Okay. There, Such would be, as. there would be faith healers. There would be, well, well let's, let's just do one at a time. That prayer right. actually works. You'd be able to pick do it the, in controlled circumstances. And that's fine. Pick the works. biggest, pick the biggest, largest type of evidence that you think would be the clearest image. I mean, God, as I rewriting your name in the stars, before, whatever it is. As I explained to you before in our debate, mm -hmm. I will accept anything that qualifies as evidence. And since we are talking about science, then it's going to be scientific evidence, which means a body of facts, objective, that which means objectively verifiable data that positively indicates one position over any other alternative. Right. Great. Perfect. So, what you're what you've just said is that <clears throat> categorically god cannot be a scientific explanation and you said the earlier and, that god was a metaphysical argument and yeah, not a scientific that's one that's fine but okay. you've also said the only things that i would accept are scientific explanations yeah because we and are about that the only and the only evidence that you would accept for an explanation are scientific evidence so what you've basically just said mm -hmm. is Assuming that God does not exist, I would accept evidence to the to the point that God does not exist. Or as evidence that God, that God does, does exist, exist, I would accept evidence that God exists. But nobody except you've it. set the standard that God cannot exist or cannot be evidenced by the type of evidence that you said you've ex you'd accept. The explanation that I gave right. for that is the believers refuse to allow a means of falsification. So if you don't allow that your hypothesis can be falsified in any way, and it doesn't contribute anything to knowledge, or there's no way to show that there's a there there, then we have nothing to work with. Right. I'm happy to accept, if you wanna present scientific evidence of God and a means of falsifying it, I'll be happy to accept that. And in fact, you did. You gave, the, the topic of this discussion today was because you said there were five different things that would falsify mm -hmm. your belief 
and I'm very curious about that. The first, yeah, and we can get to, well, we can get to those, but I, but I want to, but I want to finish this, this, this line before we move on from it, right? So, okay. so you're you're saying if you could give me scientific evidence, but in your definition of scientific evidence, you're saying it cannot demonstrate God. So you're saying I would accept as evidence for the existence of God something that categorically cannot be evidence for the existence of God. So therefore, your view is not false. Your view itself is not falsifiable. Okay, we are because you're about the only type of evidence that could falsify my view is evidence that can't falsify my view. Wrong. You gave a scientific answer. You gave a scientifically adequate answer in when you said that your view would be falsified under these criteria. Now that's fascinating that you gave a means of falsification. The thing that, that it is confusing and that needs to be worked out is that you then contradicted yourself by saying that, science, that that God is completely metaphysical, which takes it out of the means of falsification that you yourself laid out. And you also said that you were an empiricist. Sure. And then you gave a handful of the five things that you listed, most of which are actually based on science. So, well, I actually said I'm not dependent an, an, on evidence. So if you're not an empiricist, then why would those things even matter to you? And these are the things that we need to work out before we can even get to those right. things. Because, and, and you have to remember, again, I, I'm not an empiricist, right? As I said, I'm not a naturalist. I don't agree with you on this falsification principle because I think we can falsify things without empirical evidence. So for example, if someone says all P's are Q, I have an A, therefore I have a Q. I can know that that's false without any type of empirical evidence whatsoever because it's logically incoherent, right? I don't need empirical evidence to know that that's false. I simply disagree with you that the only way to falsify something is via empirical evidence. Um, and I think that I've shown that your position itself on falsification itself cannot be falsified. And so by that route, can't, uh, by your own standard, can't be true. No, I, because I, I, any I, any evidence. So if I if I trotted out faith healers, right? How, you're going to say, well, well would why you would a faith that healer? My ability, I mean, and, and what what I'm what I'm saying is, it, it, there's two two prongs here. You have to show that there's a there there, and you have you have to show that it's right or prove that it's wrong, and you should all be able to do both, right? There should be a way to show that it's right and prove that it's wrong. If God exists, there should be a way to show that there's evidence of that and find a way to prove that, you know, if God did not exist, then hypothetically, then there would, they would, there would be these properties or this experiment right. or this situation under these circumstances that would be able to falsify that, right? Can or we, do, we can do it abductively. Or we can do it abductively apart from empirical evidence because it's not a scientific question, right? But and, if you're saying it must be in which done scientifically. This conversation, you said yourself that it is a metaphysical argument. So Correct. then you started arguing with me that it should be. I agree that it's a metaphysical. That's my point. Then, then we agree on this. Okay. So we, for, for different reasons, I grant, right. We agree. And so we, we should just set that aside. And then I get to the next thing about why would you say that it would falsify and not just get you to, to rethink your position, but why would it falsify as in, i.e. disprove God if science had an explanation for any of the five things that you mentioned? Why would that be? Well, if science had had an explanation for something like the existence of the universe, which I'm I, I'm not even sure categorically how that would be possible, since science only describes the thing within the universe. If that would be even possible, that would mean that the claim that God is creator, for example, um, or that God is the is the prime mover or the necessary condition or something along those lines, is false. Um, because it, it, it's for the same reason why the 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 religious claims, which I which I don't equate to Christianity, but the religious claims that Thor is causing the lightning would be falsified, right? Because if if you could give an, a material or a natural explanation in place of a metaphysical one, um, then you have a real shot at showing that the the metaphysical realm. Uh, the me the metaphysical uh, explanations are no longer valid explanations. In the same way that that the the kind of um, uh, pagan and I, and I say pagan not necessarily in a derogatory way, but I mean in the in the religious sense of uh, you know the big strong Superman up on Mount Olympus type of explanations causing the thunder. Um, the same way that those really were attempts at giving 
quasi natural explanations for natural events. They were trying to give normative explanations for, for things like lightning. Those are, those are simply different than what, what we're talking about here is God is the explanation. But if you can say that, that the, the natural explanation impedes into the realm of the metaphysical explanation, then that would edge out the metaphysical explanation from possibility. I just don't think it does that. Okay, so you had a debate with Kent Hovind at some point, right? Did, mm -hmm. that, did that happen? No. Did that debate never happen? I've never talked to Kent Hovind in my life. Okay. I could have sworn it was... No, 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 I'm sorry. That I got you confused with somebody else. So my, my apologies there. That's, that's, no, that's I did I did get you confused with someone else. So what, what the, the point that I wanted to make was people have used that same argument for evolution, right? That, that, that if you have a scientific explanation mm -hmm. for evolution, that that would disprove God. But of course, once there was a scientific evolution explanation for evolution, then you, suddenly you had a whole host of, of scientists who happen to be Christian who they say, well, we fully accept that, that there's evolution and that it's God guided. So that whatever scientific explanation we have came about that way because of God. So God, right. God just designs everything to be the way that it looks completely natural. And 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 I I 100% agree with you that that is an ad hoc. That's actually not a good way. I think that the the people who have made that move to a kind of theistic explanation, I agree with you that that is not a good. That's not a good way to handle it. I would simply point out historically that that the the position that has has <laughs> has gone away from seeing God as the tinkering God into evolution. Um, it existed long prior to the existence of evolution. I mean, the 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 and we and we talk about this in the debate that the young Earth position, the creation science position, actually is relatively new. That is not the historical way that Christians have understood God's God's interactions with His own creation. So uh, I'm 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 in this way probably very different uh, than the fundamentalists that you're used to talking to, the anti-evolutionary Christian quote unquote science. Um, uh, believers that you're that you're you're probably used to talking to. While, while I am um, used to talking to them, I, I talk to a gamut. You're right. I I know. I'm just saying that, that that tends to be the majority of those who are very vocal in these discussions. And 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 in a lot of ways, I would stand shoulder to shoulder with you in critiquing them. I mean, I have I have <laughs> lots of things critiquing. You know, Ken Ham, for example. Um, well, good to hear uh, that. But uh, you, you, you know, know what I mean, that you know, we, we have the explanation of evolution and that many people, many people have said that that the, the evolution explanation was supposed to disprove God. But I mean, the, the very few people who you know, in the atheist camp ever thought that evolution disproved God. You know, yep. there, was, there was religious people who generally made that argument. And then those who rejected evolution, of course, would still make that argument. And that's why they that's why they reject evolution. And then other people right. just simply accept evolution and say that it was God guided. So it doesn't. Yeah. Having and, the, what my point is, having the scientific explanation does not disprove God, at least in this instance. So why should it in the five instances that you gave me? Right. Right. Be because and and. If you could indulge me for about 30 seconds on this, um, the the problem with that is, is again, that when when evolution first came out, most Christians actually didn't have a problem with it. Um, and what happened was, was that that the, the dispute started to come around, um, not that it disproved God, but that it disproved something like Adam as the first man and therefore, therefore uh, the fall and therefore uh, sin and all that kind of thing. And so it started to corrode a very literal understanding of, of Genesis. And so that, so then it basically, instead of just falsifying that literal understanding of Genesis, you, you've spoken to fundamentalists. They, they basically think, well, my understanding of this passage just is God. If you disagree with me, you're disagreeing with God. And so if you disagree with this, you're denying God. Yeah. Right. And so they make that, they make that leap. And so therefore evolution turned into, well, evolution disproves God because they just equated their view with God. Now, like I said, with the, with the thunder and lightning thing, the reason why um, that was a problem for them was because their understanding of how God related to his creation was a very uh, mechanistic, very imminent understanding where God is almost a tinkering God. God, God was the one 
God was was the uh, the ghost in the machine. God was actually the one uh, causing and and upholding directly the normative processes. He he was he was directly in creation itself. Um, that hasn't historically been the view of Christianity. That that's not even the majority view now. Um, that was a very that that's a very late modern Western, very American evangelical fundamentalist position. It's actually an extreme minority in the history of the church. Are you familiar with and, uh, Sir Richard Owen? Uh, no, I'm not actually. Okay, he's the one that that built the uh, the the British Museum of Natural History in London. Uh, the fantastic building. Have you ever been there? I no. I, unfortunately, I would. I it's haven't. One of the most magnificent buildings I've ever seen in my life. But he he established. He was the the foremost authority on paleontology in the world in his day, and he was Darwin's mm -hmm. mentor. But he was also a creationist of a strange sort. And he, although this was in you know England in the 19th century, and he argued that God was the tinkerer that you're talking yep. about, that he created uh, uh, dinosaurs. He refused to allow people to believe that dinosaurs were fast, warm-blooded, efficient animals because he he insisted that that Sir Richard Owen believed that that God created and improved on his next model so he would re he would let some some species become old and sluggish and fat and slow and then he would replace them with more mm. efficient ones so he thought that lions and tigers and bears replaced you know megalosaurus and so forth right right Wh which i mean that that would just be an example of that that tinkering type of uh, of mentality that goes that goes yeah, i bring it, it up only because you said that th this idea was very american and clearly well, yeah the, start the the idea of 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 Christian science. You can read Ronald Numbers, not a Christian at all. Um, he he has a book called The Creationists, and he traces the the history and kind of the lineage of this creation science movement. Um, there, you know, there's there's a couple tentacles that go back into history, but by and large, um, it, it it it's an outworking of the 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 Seventh Day Adventist movement, and and then really gains steam in the seventies. But but going all the way back to your question, because this has been somewhat of a divergent, interesting divergent, but but uh, a, a divergent nonetheless. To go back to your question, the reason why I think it would um, would falsify or at least go a very long way towards it um, is that if if science, if if you could give natural explanations for metaphysical things, right, that would basically show that that metaphysical explanations can be natural explanations. Um, and and it would it would it would effectively move God out of um, any type of meaningful uh, explanation um, in in any category. Not you know you you would say that an explanation that that can't be you know uh, meaningfully uh, falsified or defended and via scientific evidentiary means and all that kind of stuff or supported. It doesn't have yeah. to just be falsified. I mean, it, it has right. to be supported. But but even on even on my position where I'm gonna say okay I I don't hold that type of falsification principle because I think there can be these metaphysical explanations I there's no other type of explanation that I would find interesting or compelling or meaningful um, outside of metaphysical explanations and so if if the natural explanations can come into that realm that would be a, a type of a type of worldview revolution that science did in the natural realm where it basically said let's get let's get god out of the tinkering game let's let's get rid of those type of those type of god as a naturalistic explanation explanations which i think was good that it did that if science could then give these these metaphysical explanations if natural if there could be natural explanations for those then there would be no place where God is a meaningful explanation on any standard of explanation, yours yeah, and mine. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm going to have to push back that there isn't a condition where God is a meaningful explanation or a, an explanation at all, meaningful or not, regardless. Not when we're talking about science. And we are talking about science here, if it's, if it's naturalism, materialism, atheism, that provides the answer, because that's collectively that's science. And one of the rules for that, uh, according to philosophy now, is that the the explanation, you can't, you can't posit an explanation that isn't true. Now, I'm sorry if you, if you could shout, shout back to, to verificationism and, and, and to that means logical positivism. It doesn't, and I can prove it, but that is one of the rules outside of, outside of logical positivism in the philosophy of science. It's a requirement that the explanation must be true. 
That means you can't just assert whatever you want to be true. You can't just claim absolute truth. You've got to be able to show the truth of it. Does that make sense to you? Um, it depends on what you're what you're saying that an explanation has to be true. So it, if you could hash that out, because I think by what I, I think I know what you mean, and I probably agree with you. But if if you mean that that the explanation must be must be true in the sense that in order to posit the explanation, um, it has to be well again what do you I mean, what do you mean that it has to be true do you mean can there can there be no can there be no I'll give you a link I'll give you a link to uh, the the Stan Stanford uh, philosophy of science uh, or Stanford Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy where it talks about what is a scientific explanation I'll be able to, I'll let you read that if you want to pick up the conversation again at a later date I'd be happy to do that yeah in the meantime. Uh, one of the other rules is that you is that it has to cite a law in order to be an explanation in science. It has to cite a law of nature, which is another reason that God kind of removes himself from being eligible for an explanation for anything. In and again, if I mean this, this could be the this could be the world's shortest conversation. If you mean um, that God is not a good scientific explanation. Of the of the normative processes of prime, I'm okay. I mean, okay. okay well, we are talking about say, you I'm said. Just gonna say okay. It would falsify your belief in God mm -hmm. if materialism, naturalism, atheism, science could explain any of these five things. But you have to remember. So I I, I don't agree with your with your equivocation of those as science. Okay. Right? How, so, so how would we so do? So how, how, do we how do we distinguish then? How do we distinguish then? atheism coming up with an explanation because atheism is just i'm not convinced that an actual deity really exists that's it that's the limit of atheism period but that's 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 again i i have i have uh, questions about that as as a meaningful definition of something um i i think that there are there are uh <laughs> clear instances where uh, atheism does not mean that or functionally do that i don't think you do but, but for the sake of argument that's fine i mean we can use that as as i'm not i'm not a i'm not a definitional objectivist i don't think words have static definitions no, nor so, do i so that you know that might be the concept of atheism that you want to use in this argument in, in this and dialogue. The one that and that's pre, the one that has predated Huxley. Yes, the one that has that the one has been in use for centuries, and and okay. is still in use unchanged today. Yes. Okay, that that that's a definition of atheism. I'm just the we, definition if, of atheism that the atheist the con, movement if that's is the using. Concept. Sure. Again, I would give pushback, but I don't think that's the point of this conversation. I, I don't think you here. can. I oh, really I, don't think you can in this case. Oh, I could. No, I don't uh, think you can. Uh, actually, rather, rather, rather and that, 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 easily. That re could. <laughs> what that requires but, is that you either back down or cough it up. So we we can you can either say okay, well, yeah. at another time, or if you want to push, bring it. Right. I, I mean, if if you want to go in, I, I'm just saying because that's not generally the topic now. But yeah, if you want to do it, the topic now. Assist, but, then okay, so can. I'll leave it alone. Yeah. I'll leave that you can't do it and we can have a later conversation where sure. we can prove that you can't do it okay but for right now we'll just go into that we are talking about a scientific explanation yes because well, you are well, asking for if, if, no, atheism again. being unable to if, if, what there's no way that atheism can explain anything other than i don't believe that gods exist right yeah. It, so if you mean, that's what I'm saying. If you, if you mean atheism in the concept of the autobiographical sense of, I don't believe in God, then yes. Um, then, then yes, I actually, I, that, that, that's fine. Okay. Right? So um, atheism could not explain anything unless it's using science. Well, if, well, in that, in that case, atheism doesn't even use science because atheism is just a, an autobiographical statement about the self. Right, so it's, it, it's, so it's not question, a, it's not even an atheism of, of anything reality outside of the self. Okay, so yeah. your question can a, you know if atheism could explain these scientific things negates as, as uh, can basket weaving explain these scientific things? So, so so this this is where this is where I'm saying. Remember, I, if you're going to do an internal critique of what I'm saying, you'd need to use my concepts, right? Okay. So that wouldn't be how I would mean atheism in that context. What do you that mean would, by atheism? A atheism to me is the is the denial of the existence of God. Well, um, I would it, have it, to, is, I would have to contest statement. you again because That's before fine. before Huxley invented the word agnostic, 
the the word atheism was already a lack of belief in God, not a, not a positive belief in not God, but a lack of belief in God. So the, the question came down to, you go to the Her pearly gates, did you believe in God, yes or no? Yes, you're a theist. No, you're atheist. That's what it comes down to. It's, it's atheist versus believers. Now, then they made up the word agnostic, which means exactly the same thing as atheist does, but it has the implication that you don't believe in not God either. And that's somehow supposed to mean that the word atheism means that you do believe in not God. But making up the word agnostic did not change the word atheism. The word atheism already meant that you lacked belief in God, and it still means that you lack belief in God now. Okay. Well, here, here's, uh, I, I guess we're going to go down the route. So here, here's, here, because we're going to have to, because we're going to have to work with the concept that I meant, right? So when I said it, I meant to the concept that I meant. For the sake of discussion, we can use the concept you mean, but the instant we do that, you can't then press it back into the statement. No, that no, no. I it has, that to, be, it has to be on your terms because you, you said this was so, all you would falsify. Yeah. Your yeah so, so because I could ask you the question, is your atheism rational? And of course it would have to be, yes. So if you mean atheism in the autobiographical sense, that question makes no sense, right? Why? Because I could say, because I could say, well, if, if we mean, let's, let's use the word theism. I could mean theism in the autobiographical sense as I possess the existence of God. Well, what sense does it make to say, is it rational that I possess the, the, the belief in the existence of God? You might say my belief itself in the existence of God is not rational, but that's one step removed. The, the question of the autobiographical description of what's in my, so if you think of my beliefs as marbles in a, in a box, there exists in my box a marble that corresponds to, I believe that God exists. If theism is the, is the autobiographical position that within, it's just the statement that within my, my box, that marble exists, then it's then it's it's trivially true right theism then just becomes trivially true it's just true that i possess god belief it's not rational or irrational so if by atheism you only mean the autobiographical sense that with i lack a belief in god in my box there's no marble that corresponds to god exists or i believe that god exists well then atheism and theism are both in that autobiographical sense, trivially true. So the instant you want to say, the instant you yeah, want to so say that theism is trivially true, the belief that a God exists, in, meaning that a God in, is trivially no, no, no. existing. No, 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 no. Okay. In, and they're so not the, both trivially true. And it's, they they can't up. both be true. Do you know what I mean by when I say it's an it's autobiographically true? Let let's let's pretend for a moment that that. There's a, that, you, that your version of my atheism, your, your terms are that I have a positive belief that there is no God. Because in fact, well, I'm not personally, even, personally, I'm not arguing for that right that's now. correct. While I am a subset of the people who are not convinced that a God exists, I am also subsequently convinced that a God not, does not exist. Now, that, that is not describing all of atheists, to be sure. I am a subset of that parent group. But for me personally, yes, I am convinced that a God does not exist and is not even possible. But... If that is the definition of defi of atheism that you want to use, how would that definition explain any of the five things or any scientific thing that you present? How could atheism explain that? The, the, the thing is that I'm going at is if you want to ask for atheism, materialism, naturalism to explain these things, then we have to use science. And you say you don't mean use science. So how right. can atheism, by your definition, explain fuck all? Right. So... So let me let me go back because I, I we weren't quite finished. So the the autobiographical sense of the term means that it's a description about what beliefs exist within your cognitive faculty. It's it, it's simply saying that in your box of beliefs, no marble corresponds to the proposition I believe that God exists. You lack that marble. Right, it, but it's just a statement about yourself. It's not a statement about reality that there that no such being as God exists. It's a statement that you lack a belief that God exists. Okay, so we're still right? trying to get to square it, one. 
I know. How, I'm going to get that. How would atheism, by there. your definition, I'm, I'm going to get anything there. if it's not going to use science? I'm going to get there. The autobiographical sense is just like saying, I have brown hair, right? It's just a description of yourself. That's the so autobiographical how, sense, and that's the sense that you're using. Okay. Okay, I'm so going to use the atheism, philosophical sense of atheism, okay. which is the position that we live in a godless existence, that there, that no such being I would argue God that existed. even the philosophical sense also includes the parent category that I was talking about, where you simply lack that a black belief that a God exists. Even in the philosophical sense, my definition is still accurate, equally so. Well, by, by, that, regardless, by that same, by that same rationale, and I can a prove Hindu, that Hindu I've already would be done that. And but, I mean, a Hindu would be an atheist by that by that definition, no. because they lack a belief in God. No, right? They 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 no, have they, the they, they belief have in God. a positive belief in many gods, right? But which they, they call which they call the Godhead God. and describe yeah. themselves as monotheistic. Well, that's questionable, but they, no, but it's they, not questionable. They, we they can would prove lack that a Hindus belief. really do describe themselves as monotheistic. Okay, they. They lack a belief in God in the capital G sense. They might no, have a marvelous. They're God in the capital in G, God. and they do use a capital G. Just uses different but, names than your God in the capital G does. But, but we're talking. And they say that your here. God is is an is an adaptation of theirs. That yours is a perversion of theirs because theirs came first. But here we're dealing with concepts, right? Right. So, so whatever getting back to the did, point, because we're still working yeah. on square one. How right. would atheism, by any definition, explain anything? That right. you suggested. Well, that, that that's again. So I would use atheism in the philosophical sense, where atheism is the description that we live in a godless universe. And again, no equally exists. valid in the philosophical sense, atheism right. is a lack of belief in gods. That, but again, by either fine. definition, how would either one explain anything scientifically unless it used science? And that's fine. Okay, so I'm you not accept saying, that if you say if you say if materialism, naturalism, atheism can explain these things, and these these are mm -hmm. scientific concepts, most of them, then we are talking about that that the materialist, the naturalist, the atheist will have to use science to do that. Right? No, no, because I that that caveat that you keep giving that these are all, that, that these are all equivocal with science. That caveat. That Did I say it was equivocal? Do you accept you, that I'm a materialist? Because I am. You, you, that, that's fine. Okay. But you, Would you, you accept you that I'm a naturalist? Are you? I, I don't know. Okay. Well, you, I said we were going to be using philo methodological naturalism, and you insisted on using philosophical naturalism. Doesn't matter. I'm a philosophical naturalist too. I don't think there's anything supernatural. So I'm Great. an atheist by both definitions. Okay. I'm a methodological and a philosophical naturalist, and I'm a materialist. What method would I use as all of these things? to explain any of the five things you gave me. I'll give you a clue. It starts with an S. Uh, unless it's metaphysics. Because a naturalist- Even in metaphysics, it would still start with an S. It, it wouldn't actually. Yes, it you, would. You, you, no, yes, it I, would, I mean, because we're talking about the origins, of science, right? Philosophers of science, Popper, Nagel, Pigliucci, other mm -hmm. ones, they would disagree. They, the, the, no, it's your, not that they would. Caveat. I've already read it. I know they better. They disagree with you. I, no, they wouldn't. And I've already read it, so I know better. If you, if you read Thomas Nagel, Mind and Compass of the Cosmos, you would know absolutely that he disagrees with you. He actually says one of the main failures of naturalism is its failure to give metaphysically relevant explanations because okay, let's, it let's relies purely this, on naturalism. Let's naturalist demonstrate this then. Let's start with the first item, the first item on your list of five. Now, I'm going to say that as a materialist, as a naturalist, as an atheist, I'm going to have to use science and that any materialist, naturalist, atheist is going to have to use science. The three together mean they have to use science. So we're going to use science, the philosophy of science, not logical positivism, not verificationism, but the philosophy of science to explain these things. Now, starting with the first one, the first okay. one on your list, and, and we're only 55 minutes into our hour conversation. So... <laughs> Yeah, and it's still arguing this, and I've, I'm, I'm sorry that we had to get this way. But anyway, the, the first item on your list was uh, whether uh, materialism, naturalism, atheism could explain the laws of logic. Yep. Now, the laws of logic, for those listening, that would be the law of contradiction, the law of the excluded middle, and the principle of identity. Is that correct? Yeah, the well, law of non-contradiction, but yeah. I, yeah. Did I not? 
You said contradiction. You're right. You're right. I'm I just, wrote that wrong. Don't, don't worry about it. My, my apologies. I wrote that wrong. It was my mistake. My typo. You're fine. So how did, uh, is there a point in the Bible that describes these laws of logic? No. Okay. Uh, but I, but I'm not saying how did we, how did we find out about them? How do we find out about them? Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll go down, but I'm going to caveat really quickly that if this goes towards giving an epistemological explanation of how we know about the laws of logic, that's not my question. It's the ontic foundation of why the laws of logic exist. So, okay. So what, so why the laws about, of logic? How exist? did we find out about them? Could be simply by the, the use of laws. Okay, so, uh, so let me, let me, let me that, that takes us into another category then. Yeah. Because we determined these laws of logic much the same way that we determine laws in physics, like that Goyle's, Boyle's gas law or uh, Einstein's, uh, what is it, electromagnetic law or, you know, Einstein's laws of motion. I mean, these are, these are things that, these are properties of the universe. Every universe has to have properties. Anything that exists at all has to have properties. And through you know, th some evaluation, we've worked out what some of those properties are. Would you accept that? That's fine. Again, I'm not. Okay. I'm not. I'm not talking about the epistemological question of how do we know the laws of logic. Okay. That's you're, not so you're talking about why are things the way they are? Why is Boyle's gas law what it is? Why are no. why are Newton's laws of motion what they are? I, I'm I'm not asking about natural laws. I'm saying the laws of logic, the well, law of non-contradiction, for example, which some philosophers would not even call laws. But I get this. Okay. So why are things the way they are? Is your question? No, specifically, no. it's the laws of logic. Okay. Because why are things why the way are they the are laws of logic specifically? Why are the reason? laws of logic specifically what they are, excluding for whatever reason all other laws? Why are they like they are? Why are things the way they are? Why are these specific things the way they right. are and not thinking about the other things? Why are they the way they are? And not just why the way they are, but why they exist. And how because the universe has to have properties. Anything that's going to exist has to have properties. And these particular things have certain properties that we have to assume they're true in order to even prove whether they would be false. We would have to assume they're true in order to even make up a falsifying hypothesis. So, so, so we don't have a choice. So these are the way things the are. They just are. That's fine. Now, well, we don't have an explanation for why the properties of the universe are the way the properties of the universe are. And God doesn't qualify as that explanation because we can't make an assertion about God that we can show to be true. We, so we can't claim that it's true. We can't just, we just I'm, I'm claiming absolute truth. You can't do that. If you That's can't, not what I'm doing. Yeah, if you but, can't show the truth of it, then you can't claim there's truth to it. Right. Hopefully you get that. So, and of course, there's if we're going to be using a scientific explanation, and I maintain that we, we have to, then God doesn't qualify as, an, as a scientific explanation for why yeah. the properties you're, of the universe but are here, the you're, they are. But here you're not giving a naturalistic explanation for the existence. You, actually, what you've done, just done is chalked it up to natural mystery. No, I so haven't. You, you have. You've just said, well, we don't, we don't, we don't know. It's, it's just naturalism. So naturalism... Is there any, is is there, could they possibly the be not any other naturalism. way? Uh, yes. So, yeah. here, so here's my question. As so, I said, in, in order we to, to ask, try what, to falsify them, we would have to assume they're true in order well, to even build a falsification. About, let's talk about what they are. So are the laws of logic material or immaterial? I would have to say that abstract concepts are therefore going to be immaterial. Right. Are, are the laws of logic absolute or subjective? No, I think that these are absolute. Okay, so they, they, they're true in all yeah, places. Much like a lot of the other physical laws, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, are, are they... Are they um, are, are they uh, natural laws or are they principles of true thought? I think they are principles of true thought. Okay. So, so uh, do, they, do they exist only within the universe, within the natural universe, or do they, do they transcend the universe such that the universe as a collection must abide by them? Now, this is getting into what well beyond me. I know some, uh, some physicists who would argue that there are uh, other properties that could exist, but it's hard for me to imagine how any uh, any such thing could exist in any reality, that these would be kind of constants in any reality, God created or not. And then the okay. point is that of the some of the things that you mentioned, some of them are more scientific, and this one is not. This right. is not one of the ones that are scientific. Right. So, we'll, so, we'll, so we'll this keep... is one 
where science doesn't have an explanation beyond these are the way things are, and that's just the way they are because that's the only way they can be. But, and but here's you're going to posit that God is an explanation for these things because God doesn't qualify at it doesn't it, the statement it, no statement you can make about God can be true and there's no law of nature that applies here you can't assert anything other than God did it because you said so well no, no 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 that's not what that's not what I'm getting at right so so here here I think I think you've you've tacitly whether you mean to or not you can correct me if I'm wrong you you've ad, you've admitted that the the laws of logic govern the whole system right you what so you far know, as even, I can tell yes as I said yeah, the, there universe, are certain... the universe as a whole can't exist and not exist the universe as a whole is identical with itself right. it, it it obeys it, it can comports with these laws yes which we've now said are are immaterial they're by immaterial they're they're obviously going to then be spaceless timeless um, well, abstract be, concepts they're yeah. a little bit different so, than spaceless well, timeless you, you also have to remember so and and here's here's where it gets tricky because you've also now said well they're principles of true thought right they're not natural laws right they are different than you, natural laws and if you say they're abstractions abstractions are causally a feat the number seven doesn't cause anything okay right and these are we, descriptive we, and that's fine we've now admitted that the universe right. comports to these laws as it would um, have to and as you've stated fine. every universe would have to everything right. that exists would have to and so would god so so they would have to uh, they would have to, so the universe itself as a whole, and God. Itself, and that's fine. We'll get there. Right. But the God universe would have itself, to uh, subscribe to these two. So these uh, well, even I, well, govern God. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So the, na the natural world itself. So God now doesn't have an explanation by, for why he now has said, to subscribe to these. But now we've said the universe is now governed by an immaterial, and so is God. faceless, timeless, uh, and so is God. <laughs> uh, abstract con uh, principles right. of true thought. Right, and which, so is God, can, governed can, by the same thing. We'll, we'll get there. Can thoughts exist apart from a mind? No. No. So by now you have by definition. Of, so now you have principles of true thought that exist as governing principles over the entire cosmos that now can't exist apart from a mind. Oh well, because these are ideas, right? These are concepts. Did they exist before the before human minds? Yes. There are constants so, in the universe that we have to put into thought. And, so you, and so by, you the have, by the fact that we find something that pre-exists and that even governs God, and God has no explanation for why they are the way they are, and God doesn't qualify as an explanation for the way they are. They you're are, running are. to God in the wings. So Remember, when we I, figure not, out something on. and we put Hold it on. into words, because it existed you're, before our words, you disprove fine. You're, no, everything you're running, we said. I get it. Running, That's a great you're, trap. You're running to a two quack, right? You're running to, well, you can't explain it on God either. Oh, no, that's not I'm saying, saying, can naturalism, can materialism explain it? Okay, so by right, you, you have the natural and the material we have world science, right? What's that? By naturalism, materialism, atheism, we have to use the philosophy of science, right? Again, that's your view. That's not mine. Okay, what what would your view? How would how would they, how would materialism explain anything if it didn't use science? It could give a, a, a philosophically robust abductive explanation without the Which use of science. Would have to rely on science. No, it wouldn't have to. It could. It could be a metaphysical. It, no, again, again. So this is the equivocate. This is the assumption that you're making. That if it what isn't science, what distinguishes materialism from science? What explain? It, it, it distinguishes what? What distinguishes materialism from science? Materialism is the phil the philosophical implications or of what methodological, you might say. or methodological, which is what science uses. So materialism is the philosophical position. I'm sorry, that's methodological naturalism. I'm sorry, we were talking about materialism again. If we're using materialism, then a materialist, I'm I as a materialist, would have to use science, right? Or <laughs> metaphysical philosophy. Or I could make stuff up, but God. I don't agree. I don't agree with you that that's making things up. Again, well, we use valid we, if we can't show that anything we're show, that we're talking about is true, if we don't have a requirement that we have to have evidence to base those assertions on, we have no way of verifying that there's any truth to what we're saying, and there's no way to prove that what we're saying is wrong. If it is, then we have nothing of value. The only remember, I don't, value I don't grant information. Any the only value information can have is, however accurate 
you can show it to be. And if you can't show that it is accurate at all, then it has no value at all. And we're now back at the principle that what you just said is itself not falsifiable, as I've shown. How? Because there, you, there's no evidence that you would allow that could falsify. So again, no evidence that I would allow that would, it has nothing to do with what I would allow. We're talking about the principles of science and not, not me. I didn't set the rules. I'm just quoting the rules others have set. Okay. And what, what are we talking about that, that we would need to falsify about my position? Your standard of falsification itself. Could what not is my falsified. standard of falsification? And why is that, why is that relevant here? Because you keep running back to, and by the way, this is all within the context of I'm still waiting for any naturalistic, materialistic, or atheistic explanation of the laws of logic. I don't know all why you're basically... waiting for what you've already got. But you haven't given one. You basically I, said, the well, one we can't, that I we gave can't was that in order to exist at all, in order for the universe to exist, in order for God to exist, in order for anything to exist, it has to have properties. Those properties have to be something, right? These properties apply even to God. These properties are inescapable, regardless what the hell you are, right? Not that's even not, God an, that's can not an explanation. These. That's a description. That is that's a description. Not an expl that's that is just a description. That, and, and the explanation behind it is there's no possibility for even God to be any other way. Again, that's not a that's not an explanation. That's a again that is an explanation, an actual... but you're not going to accept it. So let's move on to the next one. Okay. The next one that you brought up uh, was objective morality. Now you, mm -hmm. you told me that I needed to, and I, we I guess we should qualify here. You said that if materialism, naturalism, atheism, by which I have to use science in any of those categories, and certainly in all of those categories, <laughs> everybody using all of those categories, absolutely every single person using all of those categories or any one of those categories is going to have to use science if they're going to provide okay. it. But they, if they're going to provide an explanation, then they have to. I disagree. Okay. I know that you disagree with the philosophy of science, and we're. I don't disagree with the philosophy of science. I, I disagree. I just, I just said, with I just gave you the explanation. What you're presenting. You can't just say that the, the magic teapot did it. Just because you want to believe that you have I'm to. I'm not be able saying to show that. that. There's some. And you. And by the way, you can't just get. You can't just define it by definitional fiat. And that's right. not what I'm doing either. And I'm if you and again, if you read, if you read Pigliucci, if you read Nagel, if you read. If you read me, Bruce, if you read any of those, they disagree with you. You cannot simply okay, say this so is everybody disagrees with science. you. Shall, shall we wait until you read the Stanford Philosophy of Science description or the Encyclopedia of Philosophy? I actually have read it. I, I, I'd be interested in what Good. clause you think. Then, with, then let's suspend. Everybody we've been an hour and 10 minutes and we haven't even started yet because we're still arguing over what we're, st what we're starting with. You're misrepresenting me. I'm accurately depicting you, and it's irritating the not. fuck out of you. And you're, you're misrepresenting I'm, me every way that you can. So let I'm me actually, I'm actually not. I'm actually not irritated, okay. even though I do think you're misrepresenting me because you're. I'm not. Because again, I'm not. You're, you're supposed you, to be you working are on misrepresenting me, and it's again, sad that it, that, that it has to be this way that we can't even make progress, and that you well, have to keep make blaming things again. on me that are clearly not my fault, and you have to you have, you have to keep associating okay. with me a logical positive, and when that's clearly not the case, no matter how many times I deny it, and you still try to stick me with uh, it. But fine, you I keep misrepresenting <laughs> me. We'll give you the references. And we'll start this conversation again when you realize why, not me, but everybody in the philosophy of science, every, all philosophers disagree with you when it comes to a, a, a what, what is required to make a philosophical, you, or excuse me, a scientific explanation. It's not me and what I refuse to accept. Think, it's what science refuses to accept or cannot accept for logical reasons. Well, not again, philosophy of science is different than science itself. Reasons. I mean, philosophy of science is different than science itself. Do you think philosophy of science is a monolithic thing that there's no. only there's only one theory of science and they all they all are uniformly agreeing with what no, you're saying? No, there's clearly not one theory, but then you and I think I, I, we definitely have a different idea of what a theory is. So let okay, but we're dealing with philosophy of science. Let, let me just leave it here. I understand that there's, there's philosophy of science and then there's the practice of science. And then you know, the, the philosophy of science does not necessarily all in, all scientists include. I get that. Okay, so so don't laugh at my ignorance. I'm not as ignorant as you think. Okay, so. I'm not saying but, you're ignorant. But you are positing and you are wrong. 
you are positing that that, sci that God can and ever has been a possible potential scientific explanation ever in history. Nope. No, the nope. things you That's were saying earlier, the not things you actually did say earlier nope. in this thing, earlier in this discussion, where you said, "Well, some scientists can get into cosmology." No, they can't. They cannot posit a God for the reasons I already explained, and which can also be explained in other sources. I'll be happy to provide for you. Okay, and no. and I can provide sources that disagree with yours. Okay, no, we you can go can't. back and we can go you back and we provide, and this is the challenge we, now for our. We next actually time. can. Th that's fine. No, I mean, I I can show you, you in Thomas Nagel. Just can. let's be clear, Thomas you, Nagel, Mind and Cosmos. You cannot <laughs> show any scientific support for God, where in, where God can be used uh, as an explanation. You move, you move the goalpost now. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't say that's that I was going to give. But, but this is this, this we are this talking is about happening. scientific explanations. You said God is an explanation for all these scientific things. No, God is not, and there are reasons why God is not. And I don't care what Nagel says, God is not, and we can show that. And you can't show otherwise. It's clear God that you don't care what Nagel says because you keep saying that God, you keep equating philosophy of science with science. No, and saying that I'm wrong, and I'm saying I'm actually presenting I'm a pretty you're wrong standard you're wrong. philosophy of I'm science. I'm not confusing philosophy of science with with just practice of science. I'm I'm not. I know I've, I've repeated that twice now. I know you don't get it for whatever reason, but that's I'm not confusing the two. Okay. But you are every time you come back and say so. You're saying you have to use by by explanation. You mean science, and I say no. Right. I mean the philosophy of science. How does, say, how does okay. yeah? How does but you mean science? And I say how does materialism say, no. explain any scientific thing? Uh, it, well, again, I already said I don't think God right. is a scientist. You can make thing. up a metaphysical explanation, that one that we can't show any truth to, that has no evidence, there's no hypothesis, there's no. Again, way I disagree that. with that category because you're right. only you're only able to It doesn't contribute. It doesn't. You're only able to say those not, caveats if you, you mean. If you can't show that there's any truth to it, excuse me. If you can't show that it's, there's any truth to it, then it does not contribute to knowledge. Do you get that? And you cannot show any truth to your position. I've already yes, shown you certainly can. it. Yes, no. I certainly okay. can, and will happily be doing, and, let, and, and, and will happily do so. Provide, but you one piece of evidence. Give me, give me one category of evidence that you would accept as scientific evidence where God could be the explanation. Where you, where you couldn't. You let really me need me to repeat this again. Yes, you asked me let twice. Me the debate. You asked me twice you here, were, and I've answered you it all four times. You haven't. Anything so, that qualifies as evidence, meaning any body of objectively verifiable facts, which positively indicative of or exclusively concordant with that condition, that the God hypothesis over any other item. What fact, what body of facts only concords with there being a God that actually it positively indicates that there is a God? Great. That's fine. Okay? Now, that Do is the answer I've given you four times and you pretended that I've never answered it before. I I'm not pretending you haven't answered. I'm, I'm, well, why do you I'm keep saying, saying that I've never answered? Why do you keep saying you're still waiting for the answer you've gotten three previous times? Because you haven't given a coherent answer. Yes, I, I did. I keep, I keep giving a coherent answer, and you keep asking the same damn question. So, now, for example, I want you to check other resources because you're clearly, excuse, excuse me, you're clearly not going to listen to me when I say why God is not a scientific explanation. I'll need you to go look up. I your view God is not a scientific explanation so that you don't blame me for it so that you don't so you understand that it's not what I'm refusing to accept. Get I'm not it? blaming you for anything. You're saying that I won't accept certain evidence of God if there was evidence of God. I, you because you keep interrupting, you, you keep not letting me finish finish my line of reasoning here. All right, I don't think you have a line of reasoning but go ahead, try to finish okay. it. So, you said faith healers in a hospital. Mhm. Mm You've also said that there is no there is no empirical scientific evidence that could demonstrate God because God is a metaphysical explanation. Mm -hmm. I agreed with you on that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, is I didn't actually agree that, that God is necessarily metaphysical because if God is affecting it, if God is affecting change in the natural world, there would be ways to indicate that. And if any of the claims about what God can do and has done in the past, there would be we would be able to show evidence of that. But we're not able to show any of the things that God is claimed to have done. All we have are is the book that's said to be his word that is absolutely wrong about absolutely everything with regard to every single scientific claim that ever makes and that does not include any of the actual truth of our world. It says that the sun and the moon are the same size and that the moon is bigger than all of the stars and that there's a firmament. All of these crap things that we know there's false, that's what we got. But we don't have a, we don't have a truth anywhere in it. That's a problem. 
Yeah, which is clearly a hyperbolic statement. But besides that, so yeah, how how if what you have, I wasn't able to hear you there. If you have a faith healer, it, it's in a clearly a what? It, it's, it's a hyperbole. Uh, that's not a hyperbole. The it, Bible actually does describe affirmative. And it does say that the sun and the moon are equal, equal and that they're both bigger than the stars. It really does say that. Th and that's and, that's and it's fine. wrong about all of those things. It, it also, wrong it also with every that, other thing it says about science. It, it also says that, that God is a, is, is a mother hen, right? Just you're you're confusing what what is you're, you're confusing types of language. You're confusing genre. You're confusing I'm not, I'm to not non confusing any of these things. You're, you're basically treating as if the only the literal interpretation is the only way that we well, can I, I will I will admit that yes, nobody I, nobody reads the Bible more the scriptures in general, regardless of what which religion they come from. Nobody reads them more literally than someone who doesn't have a vested interest in trying to make excuses for apologetics. So well, atheists will will read them more literally than anybody else would. And 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 there's I see no virtue in that. But besides that, well, I'm going to just show me which parts are metaphorical and which parts are literal, and we'll be happy to. I'll be happy to. I, I, I have a I have a whole series on it actually. I, I have a whole okay. series about the problems with concordism. So when and it the problems talks about the firmament, what is it really saying? Well, let, let's continue on with with what I'm what I'm going down. Okay, so let, let, let's let's clarify. We can we can come back. We can come okay. back. I, I, I have to come back. And by the way, I want to I want to I want to sincerely thank you for taking part in this, and I mean that. I really do mean that sincerely. I do honestly appreciate that you came on for this discussion with me. And I, I, and I'm happy to come. And and to be honest, I you know I'm not I'm not thin skinned. I'm not uh, I'm not offended. I've been frustrated in discussions with you where I roll my eye. It. It's fine. I, I have thick skin. I'm fine with fervent and and passionate debate. You're not name calling. You're not. You're fine. I, I I'm not. I'm not in. Yeah. I don't think you're going to hysterionics like that. that. Okay. So, so what I would like to do is I'd like to take a break and I'd like to come, I'd like to ha to schedule a second part of this discussion where we'll discuss the other items that you that were on your list. But before we do that, I really do need you to see that it isn't me setting the rules for why God can't be, a, why God does not qualify as a scientific explanation ever in any case, ever in history. Okay. Well, let, let's do, let's do that. If I can make a recommendation, let me finish my, my line of thought. You don't have to answer here. And I'll link you an article where I make this exact same argument. Give time to think about it. We'll set another record date. You know, our, our schedules are busy. This was hard to get together, but we'll do it. I, I'll true. commit on air to everyone. We'll do it. We'll come back. Here's, here's my question. Imagine you have a faith healer in a hospital. Every time he prays, he heals somebody. Why in your view? Because you said that that would be valid evidence on the one hand. However, on the other hand, why would you say that God is the best explanation of that material scientific data and not quantum weirdness, aliens, we live in the matrix, uh, we don't know, but science will find out one day. Why would you think that that is evidence for God did it as the explanation for a faith faith healer, and not a naturalistic explanation for that? Well, so, does that, I mean, that question? Why that would now. that be? Why would that falsify your position and be evidence for God? Because you would. You don't have to, don't have to because, answer it now, but yeah, that, that, that's the answer. You know, if I were if I'm hanging out with Gandalf and Hermione and Obi Wan and Spock, they're going to be able to demonstrate these things, and I can't explain it. But you know, in, in the most rigorous scientific testing, I mean, you have like a you have a control group. You like you know, fourteen people in a control group, and then fourteen people in this other group, and the and the real tests being done on them, and mm -hmm. the placebos being given to the other people, right? And then we can we compare the results when consistently. I'm seeing that that when Gandalf walks in and he, you know, he waves his staff and the staff glows and the people are suddenly better, you know, I mean, and and okay, well, that's that's outstanding. This is not this is we can't attribute this to you know cancer having gone into remission because a moment later, a minute later, sixty seconds later, it's gone. The cancer's gone. They're healthy, dude. Their hair's already growing back. I can't explain that. Science can't explain it. But you've just verified that's a thing. I've got to give credence. Now you may not have per you may not have positively demonstrated God or your God, but I mean that there you've got good credence toward that. You've at least established that magic is real, and since gods are made of magic, then we've got a basis to work with. But notice at what you're saying. Have so, a foundation of your God. But notice what you're saying. So it's not that it proves that God exists. Remember, I asked what would be evidence of God, mm -hmm. and I think you could actually say it wouldn't even be proof that magic exists. It would be oh, proof that. Be. 
it, no, but, but, but if, you do, if you constantly, it would be proof that lightning exists. Okay. Let me, let me, it would be like, saying, it would be like saying science doesn't explain it. Okay. Let's, let me put this another way. Uh, James Randi, who I'm proud to say is a friend of mine, uh, had run for at least a decade. He'd been holding a, a $1 million reward or offer for anybody that could demonstrate anything of the supernatural under controlled scientific conditions. And of course, lots of people showed up thinking they could do this. And, and one guy, one of his favorite stories was that just some guy comes up from like Ecuador or somewhere and he's carrying this huge suitcase and when he failed to do his demonstration where he thought he could like remote view or read people's minds or whatever, and for whatever reason, this is the first time it didn't work. He starts leaving. They're like, well, what's in the suitcase? It was an empty suitcase because he expected to carry a million dollars back in cash. Right. He honestly thought he was going to win that. But if there really was supernatural stuff, if miracles happened, if faith healing worked, if there were gods and ghosts and demons and all of this other stuff, any of it, if there were souls, there would be some way of verifying that. And so there would be some kind of test that could be done. So when you have these tests that consistently, repeatedly, reliably show that, hey, Spock really can do the mind meld. Obi-Wan is not really there. We can throw things through him, and yet he's still talking to us, and then he vanishes in evanescence. How amazing is that? That's, we can verify that that happens reliably. Whenever, whenever we're supposed to, Gandalf really does these things with that big stick that he's carrying, really does light stuff up. There's no mechanism. There's no batteries. It just lights up because he told it to. There's ways of verifying that that happens. You and don't have fine. that. With and that's God. and that's fine. My, but my if it point, was a God, you would have that. But my my point of all, but you've already said that that wouldn't be evidence of God. So no, that no, wouldn't. No, I didn't say that. I mean, at least when we're talking about like when I argue with creationists about you know evolution and everything, we the, we have to start with the basis. So so we start with the mechanism. We have the basis. We can verify this is this is true. Now where's your basis for God? Got nothing. But at least with these tests, you would have the basis. You would show that there's a supernatural, and that's huge. If you can show that there really is a supernatural, well, then God becomes possible. Or- and, and we can actually look at that. Yeah, or, because I, I'm, now, I'm now gonna play the skeptic, and I'm now gonna say, Ra, Aaron, what you're doing is you're blaming Thor for the lightning. No, no. You're, 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 you're attributing to the, the supernatural to a natural outcome. Instead of saying God did it for the miracle healing, why not say that in some way there's there's positive thinking, there, there's there's truth to the power of positive thinking that somehow That's we have this interaction too. with 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 natural. All That's we would be doing is saying the natural. All we'd be saying is the natural is bigger. No, we wouldn't. Right. We'd be, okay, so, we, we'd be talking about a supernatural thing. We would have verified a supernatural ability. When, when Hermione comes out and waves a stick and says a magic word and things poof out of nothing, I, you know, living things poof out of nothing, that's pretty amazing. I got to give credence. Hey, now I accept. We've done it repeatedly. We've done it reliably. Test after test. She can do it every time. Things poof out of nothing when the little girl waves her stick and says magic words. I got to give their supernatural thing. There's some truth to that. We've shown truth to it. There's a thing there. That's supernatural. That exists. And now we have a basis for the rest of it. Go ahead and show me the rest of it. Now I'm open that there's a there there. Or we don't know. Or we'll figure it out one day. Okay. What 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 are we gonna do? We we've shown that we've shown under test after test after test in controlled circumstances. She's not bringing any batteries. She's not bringing any chemical reactions. She's uttering words, and living beings are poofing out of thin air. Sorry, that's not that's not a pen and teller trick. That's something bigger than that. And when it happens every it happens every time. It's reliable. We can verify there's a thing there. Now what we have conversely in the reality is we have religious people, various different religions, all claiming to be the absolute truth, and they're all asserting all kinds of things, and every test fails. Absolutely all of them, every time. For interactionists, here's the thing. I agree with you, because what you've done, so I, I'm done playing the, the hyper-skeptic. Yeah. What you've done is said, we can do valid abduction. Our data points come from what we observe. The explanation to the supernatural that metaphysical explanation is done via abduction. We've looked at something. We don't have direct observation of whatever the whatever is happening to cause 
I, I, Hermione, is that her name? Whatever it is. We don't have direct observation you of whatever. You never Harry Potter, did you? <laughs> I haven't. I haven't actually. I, I tried to read the books and I'm, I know that I guess they're supposed to get written better as they go. I got through the first one and I was like, I'm not. Okay. Well, well, credence for having, having gone through the first one. I just, I, I tried. I, just I, I, run, in, I live in Texas and so I, I understand you're on the West coast. So you have a much better situation. But here, a couple streets or a couple houses down from my house, I saw the neighbors holding a Bible against my son's head saying, I rebuke thee, I rebuke thee, I rebuke thee, because he was wearing a Harry Potter t-shirt. Yeah. But for some reason, they love Lord of the Rings. I don't I don't get it. Uh, <laughs> um, but, but Oh, because what? that was written by a friend of C.S. Lewis, and the right. two of them were in some sort of competition. Yeah. And and, and, so, and somehow it, you know, it, it had Christian themes, whatever. Uh, so... This, this is actually, this is, I'm okay with that because when I'm giving these, these examples of, of say objective morality, laws of logic, whatever, I'm fine with saying we can gather the data points by using our, observ I mean, we have no other way of interacting with what we observe around the world besides what we see, think, interact with. I'm fine with that. Uh, I'm fine with saying something like, uh, because I also gave, you know, the, the fine tuning specified complexity existence from something, you know, something from nothing. We get the data points, something exists. That's a data point. We get it by observation. We get there exists objective morality. We get that by observation. Well, we know that we're, we're gonna have to we're gonna problems. have to discuss all of that. And that's because, fine. Yeah. But, but my point is merely that the the move abductively, and we did this, we talked about this in 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 our in our debate in the in the conversation afterwards. The move abductively to the best explanation the best explanation itself might not be something that we can empirically directly prove because okay, so, it exists as the abductively best explanation. Or it doesn't exist. So when we come yeah, back... That would be a good explanation. Yeah, we'll come back. When, we'll we, come when, back. when we come back, and I don't know when that'll be. I don't know if we, even if we'll be able to, to do it this month, but whenever we can, and we'll work on that. Yeah. Uh, I want you to show me a scientific educational source sure. that implies how God could be an explanation or concede that God cannot be an explanation for reasons that I did not set. Sure. Okay. Yep. I, I mean, have, have you read, I'll give you one now. If you haven't read it, maybe read it between here and when we discuss again. Have you read Nagel's Mind and Cosmos? No, but I did ask for an education, a, a science edu source. So yep. something that, that is actually teaching science that advocates that God can be used as a scientific explanation. Well, well, Nagel is a philosopher of science. So when you when you're saying you you're you're not equating science with philosophy and science, and you allow both, then surely a, a philosophy of science, because that's what we're getting to. Right, but well, if we're using permit. scientific explanations, then the, the criteria should be easy enough. Yep. If an educational source teaching science at a college level, or better, you know, is 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 going to say that 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 God can be used as a scientific explanation, fine. But we both know already that's not going to happen. Because that, and I and I never claim that God is a scientific explanation. So I I don't know why I sort yes that. you did. No, you, we, we're talking about science, and you said that you disagreed with me when I said that God cannot be a scientific explanation. Is we're talking about we're looking for. Scientific explanations. You said God is an explanation for all these things. No, yep. he is not. We're talking about questions of science here. But but God is not an answer. I've said God is an explanation. And you're now equivocating explanation with scientific explanation. No, I've, I didn't I've equivocate. I said in the beginning that we are definitely talking about scientific explanation. I clarified it numerous times. And I've denied it numerous minutes. times. And I've denied right. it numerous if times. If we're talking about explanations, we're talking about naturalism, materialism, atheism, we have to use science, so we are talking about scientific explanations. Or now, philosophy. if you want bullshit explanations, there's no reason to continue. All right. I said, but I'm, I'm going to have to stick with scientific explanations. And I said... In which case, God doesn't count. And God was never right. an explanation to begin with. And and that's fine. And, and and actually, that's fine. Because the naturalist giving an explanation for the laws of logic wouldn't give God as an explanation. So I don't I don't actually Nobody could. care if you think and but that's just the point is is I'm not asking for your critique of my position. I'm saying can naturalism, can materialism, the, those philosophies give better okay. I have to push back atheism is not a philosophy I didn't say atheism, atheism is just a single statement 
all of those positions, and, and materialism. Have, just all that. of those positions have to use science to answer the question that you're asking. So if you're great, if then you're you allowing I, that I'm materialism, saying, atheism, I, naturalism are going to answer with science, then we can proceed. If you're not going to answer that, then we can't. Yeah, but that's fine. So because remember, I don't think that. So okay, I'm asking for. Whatever answer the the naturalist or the materialist would give, or the atheist, or the, the existence of A, B, C, D, E, whatever, all three. Whether or not, answer. that's fine. Okay. Whether or not you think God is an explanation as a critique of my view, is 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 actually irrelevant because right. the question that, is, can I, you that, give an explanation? It's not, it's not for rules. So if we're talking about science, God was never an explanation. Period. So okay. and not because of me. It's not my decision. Okay, I, that that's fine. I mean that that I <laughs> I know you don't believe God is an explanation. I'm asking it's for better to what I believe. Okay. It's not my rules. I didn't set it up. When we're talking about science, God is not an answer. God never qualified as an explanation. Okay, that, I'm not asking for your critique of my view. And it's not my And I'm asking critique. for a better And you're not asking for what you're not getting. I know I'm not getting it. I'm not I I'm asking for a better abductive explanation. So we're asking for these for features of reality. Explanation for if that's the type of explanation you think you can give for those, then sure, we can come back. Okay, so you have a scientific for explanation. Yes. I'm asking for any explanation. If you okay, think. A bullshit answer or a scientific if, explanation? I'm asking for an explanation coherent under naturalism. So and materialism. scientific explanation. Yes. Okay. okay, that's what you okay. think that entails. So sure, yes. you so, give yeah, that. that yeah, yes, and I don't God think that's what entails. So I would accept other ones. Okay, but <laughs> I don't. It, it's irrelevant if you think that God. It doesn't has nothing to do with what I think, and it doesn't even matter what you think. It's that's, what we can what I mean. to be true. That's so fine. We can we you're, can you're not, whether whether God it qualifies as a scientific explanation is not. I didn't write the, the, the papers. I didn't I didn't come up with the rules. Neither saying, did you. So we I'm both have to look at what the rules are. And you can come back to me and say, do the rules support you using God as a scientific explanation or not? But you're you're going on the you're going on the offensive against the God explanation. I'm not asking. I'm not. You. I'm not asking if God is or I'm not. is. Not a I good tried to help you. I no. tried to tell you that just All because right. science produces a, an explanation for something just, does not disprove God. I'm that's, just that's trying helping. to give. That's not being on the offensive. I'm just trying to give what I'm asking for. Okay. I'm not asking for a critique. For anybody that's disappointed in the shirt that I'm wearing, I'm sorry. We we couldn't even get to the starting point. Yeah, so because we because we have different standards of epistemology and evidence. That's been abundantly clear. I have the standard and you have some other made up stuff. Okay, so we'll we'll come back again and we will be looking for scientific explanations. If that's what I, you want to give, yep. Yes. Yep. So and then we'll and and what we and then you'll have to understand that it's not me that made up the rules. It has nothing to do with what I believe or what I want to believe Which as whether the, God relevant to what answer you give. Whether God ever even in cosmology, ever qualified as a scientific explanation. But that's but 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 see, stop right there. That I'm not asking for a critique of if God is an explanation. I'm. I, let's, imagine said, that, let's imagine. Let's imagine. Hold on. Let's imagine that God. You said imagine, that God qualifies on, as an explanation for all these things. No, He does not. But I'm. You and said. You, and what you need to understand on, why He does not. Me, can and I it's just? Not, it has about, nothing to do with logical positivism or anything else you want to pin on me. Arn. I said, that's why I believe. What would undermine that belief of mine is if naturalism or materialism, I'll bracket off atheism for now since you don't like it. That, that, naturalism that or materialism. Like it. it's, I'm saying that right, naturalism, science, materialism, and atheism, the three together require a scientific answer. We argued for 40 minutes over whether materialism, naturalism, atheism would have to give a scientific answer, to which they do. Period. It could have been over I'm in saying, a single minute. If, if you could present whatever you think, again, I'm not asking for a rejoinder right this second to jump in. We clearly disagree on this. I'm saying what would undermine my belief is a better competing position. Whether or not you think my, <clears throat> my explanation is bad or not, whether you think God isn't an explanation or not, that, that's irrelevant. I'm asking what is 
You're the right. It's irrelevant what I think. It's what we can show. So if okay. we're giving right. scientific explanations and you say that God is an explanation, sorry, no, no God no, no. does not qualify. Aaron, not even in the instance you gave. Your proof. Okay, not for the sake of argument, for the sake of argument, God doesn't exist. For the sake of argument, let's pretend I'm not a Christian. What? You are not understanding Christian. anything I'm trying to explain to you. You're not understanding my question that I'm asking of you. Oh Let's imagine that I'm that I'm an unbeliever. And I'm and I'm exploring this conversation wouldn't have been so maddeningly you. frustrating were that the case. <laughs> Fine. It, it, trust me, you're not the only one frustrated. So if I'm saying, great, I'm not a theist. I let's let's imagine for the sake of argument, I agree with you. God is a terrible explanation. Great. Not now, an explanation at all. Great. Let's fine. Let's stipulate that for the sake of argument that we agree. We agree. It's the, it's the universal consensus of everyone that God is not an explanation of all. It's in and, all and the it's literature. It's not even a consensus. It's just according right. to the rules of logic. Perfect. Well, <laughs> you're getting, you're now using the rules of logic, but let's I'm now still say using the, the rules of logic. Yes. Now give a positive explanation for the ontic foundation, the reason of being for Laws of logic, objective morality, something from nothing. We've got, we, that, you're right, opening so up so many worms. From, you can. from a you, natural... You're asking me to, to, get, to explain the existence of things that don't exist. And you, you're you using know, as your explanation you another thing that doesn't exist that's supposed to explain these yeah. other things that don't you're exist. Now, remember, I've stipulated, I'm not presenting a God I bought. You're, you're going back to, to attacking theism. I'm saying let, theism isn't on the table anymore for what I'm asking. All right, so I'm never mind. We're not going to reschedule. We're not going to reschedule. We're just going to continue as it is because you insist on opening up all those other cans of worms. No, no, no. I'm saying we can continue. I'm saying that's that's the question I'm asking. If you want to come back and 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 discuss that, that's what, but that's the question I'm asking. I'm asking for what is the competing, or or the only because you're going to say God isn't an explanation. Great. What is right. the there, only? There literally is no competing right. explanation there. And what is that explanation on naturalism for the existence of a realm? of universal, abstract, immaterial, spaceless, timeless, in absolute other words, the properties of the universe. principles of true thought that exist only in a mind, no. which are all things we've agreed on now. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're trying to trip me up. Now, of course, if our if we're, we're trying to understand the rules of the universe, yes, we're going to use thought. We're going to use words to put those into words. And these things existed before we had words. So that's not a contradiction. I'm not so asking for again. I'm not asking explain before. I'm not asking how we as I explained before. These are things that we think about, right? Logic is obviously a thing that we think about. So that's that's within the mind. But you know, there, there are there are these rules that pre-existed even our concept of logic. So it's not a contradiction that these are the properties of the universe, and our thoughts are in our words to describe them are only our attempts to understand them. But all you're doing is saying, if I say, why is the sky blue? You're gonna say, well, the sky is blue because the sky has to be a certain color because yeah, that's- I would give the explanation about the oxygen sun. content that would cause the refraction and that causes that, it to be blue. Fantastic, that would be an explanation. But when I ask what the laws of logic are, you're saying, well, the laws of logic just are the are the, print, are the features- Are the only reality. way that they can be, yes. I, and that's why God are has the to only, follow them as well, because it's impossible that, to be but, anything but again, else. You keep, you keep bringing up God because you keep trying to shift the burden of proof back I'm, to... I'm, what I'm pointing to you is that these did not come from God. These are beyond God if God has to conform to them as well. Right. We're so not even talking about not God. Not even God. If not even God, if okay. not even God can be God and not God, then these apply even to God. God did not create these. God cannot, therefore, logically be the explanation for them. He actually can as a necessary being. That is the foundation. But he's can. obviously not, since he has to subscribe to the same rules. But, but you're using subscription language. But again, I've, I remember I've said I took God off the table. It doesn't every matter. Time you, every time you now go to attack God, you're 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 shifting the burden away. No, because we still I'm have asking, to have God in the table because you said that he's a. He, if you want to if you want to admit that God is not an explanation for these things, for the rules that he himself has to subscribe to and therefore could not have logically created, that's fine. We can do that. And but we remember, can but remember, we're asking you. You asked me what would falsify my view, right? And I said, and I said a better position than the one that I think is true. Right. You clearly so you think, think, where do you, where do you I think, why do you I want think? the better one? Can well, okay, you, so, can you not? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Better yeah. I've already given so a better one. 
but we you have all years. you do is describe them. So it's, I, it's, like, it's already... like all, you, all you've done is say the laws of logic are the laws of logic. No, the I laws haven't. of logic, which are which are the which cannot no, be other than they are. are. That's the, the laws of logic just are the things that they are, and they're if in their. They are book. the only way that they can be. That's why God has to be right. that way but too. Why do they exist in the first place? Right. So how would but you explain? It? So you want me to give the better explanation? I said that's the only way that they can be, and that's why even God has to be that way, which is the explanation, because that is the only way that it can be. The explanation is that that is the only way it can be, and that's why God has to be that way too. So that is an explanation. Let's hear your explanation for why God has to subscribe to the laws that define God. Sure. So, so what type of a thing can ground an absolute, immaterial, spaceless, timeless? What kind uh, of thing can bind universal, itself to rules that pre-exist and govern over the thing that exists? It that doesn't God. bind itself. It is that that just why is, does God have to subscribe to those yeah. rules? There, that's that's like asking why is a triangle a triangle? Because well, okay. definitionally, that but necessary is. It is these rules apply to God, so God could not logically have be the, and God could lo not logically be the explanation for them. I, I disagree that God, th th see, that's that's not okay, the case. So whatever of God. you say, no matter how logically grounded, you're going to say that you disagree with it. You're not going to be able to give a reason. You certainly can't give a defense. You're just going to say that you disagree with it. Because that's not the con, again, you're dealing with the straw man. That's not I'm the not dealing with the straw man. of God. You are. That is literally what you're doing. You're saying you don't agree, but you because can't give a reason why constant. you disagree. I'm not giving the reason. Justify. If you'd let me finish, I'm telling you the reason because that's not the concept that we're dealing with. When when a theist says God, we are talking about a necessarily existing ground of being. That no. being, laws of- we're, talk, we're talking about something that was made up by primitive people because they didn't have okay, a better- but then you're begging the question, right? But then, but then you're saying- I'm begging the I'm question. Saying, that's, that's what, what the it is. Concept is. Okay, but then you're begging the question. Then you're I'm saying- I'm not begging the question. Well, that's what it is. You that's want, you the want to beg that's the saying my you conclusion want to beg, excuse me you want no. to beg the question by assuming that god is a necessary being god is absolutely superfluous not a necessary being that is the that that's is the question, begging begging the question. That you are doing and in fact the number one fallacy all religious belief is based on logical fallacies and the all biggest right. most common mandate of, of all of them is the question begging fallacy I'm not begging the question. I'm not yes, saying. You clearly are. You're, I'm you're not, stating I'm not just saying, a definition no, 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 no. of fiat that God is a necessary being. No, I'm he's saying, not. Let me finish my statement. I'm saying that that is the concept. Now, we can debate whether or not that concept is true. I'm not begging the question because I'm not saying because that's the concept, therefore, I'm right. You're saying because I'm right, therefore, I'm right. Because... I'm right about my beliefs about God. Therefore, I'm right, and your concept is false. You are begging the question, and I, what I I'm saying am is that not is not begging the, concept. the question. Okay. God is well, not in this discussion a right. necessary then, being. To claim that He is a necessary being is begging the question. I'm saying that's the concept of God. If God were to exist, the concept and He would that still we're not be a necessary is being. A necessary being. Why? Why would he be? Why wouldn't he be? If the Why concept, is, if the concept <laughs> of a being that exists How necessarily, be? if the concept is that God would be a necessarily the, the existing being, what you're you saying, brought. what you're saying is, it's it's logically fallacious to say that if a necessarily being exists, then he would exist necessarily. Okay, no, 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 in A, if possibly no, no, no. A, if possibly A is false. Hello, no, not not remotely, not remotely. You can stop being wrong for a minute. You stop being wrong for a minute. I mean, no, I, like, I haven't been wrong yet. So you're you arguing you're wrong, that and I don't this think is I'm the wrong. only way that the universe can be. This is the way even God has to be, because even God can cannot be not God and be God at the same time. So these are properties that are constant. With or without God, they were still that way with or without God. Therefore, God is, by definition, not necessary. You are begging the question, not me. But again, all you've done is redefine the concept. That's I didn't not redefine the concept either. either. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Okay. That's fine. We haven't, even, we haven't even got started. We are now an hour and 44 minutes in it. We haven't even begun yet. All we've done is word salad. It is enormously frustrating. And we haven't even gotten to the various things. Can we get to the various things? Are we going to do that now or are we going to do that later?
we we can do that later. I mean, we we are we are running at two hours. I think we're both frustrated. I think we both think we're right and the other is wrong. I I, think, I, I can prove that I am. Yeah, and I, and I can prove that I I guarantee everyone listening to you is saying you cannot show that God, God has God proven him wrong. wrong. And everyone never, listening on my side is saying God Tyler's never proven a wrong. scientific explanation for anybody, even any scientist, even working in cosmology, like you said. Earlier. I never and I never said it was. Yes, you did, and it's a recorded conversation, so we can prove that later. I never, I never said that God was a scientific expert. You explanation. did say that I, it, no, some no. scientists could, when they get into the realms of cosmology, and I said, no, they can't. No scientist can, period. Because it doesn't they, matter what field they're talking about. I said they can because they have abductive metaphysical explanations at their disposal. So when they're not they doing science, then they're You're not speaking. being scientists. If they're oh, being scientists... That's your position. That, that's your position. Just, that, that's, yeah. that's, like, that's like saying anyone dealing with okay. the multiverse is well, not yeah, being When they're right. being rational, then they can give <laughs> rational answers. And when they're being irrational, then they can give okay. your answers. Then every, cosmologist, then every cosmologist working on the multiverse is not a scientist and they're being irrational. Exactly. Yes. When they when okay. they when they posit you're, you're on record. You're on you're on when record they, saying that when any, you believe any, any cosmologist dealing with the assume multiverse is not scientific and irrational. When you assume as fact anything that is, when you assume as fact anything that is not evidently true, I'm not assuming anything is fact. I, I make the abduction. Excuse me, I'm argument. trying to make another point here. When you assume anything is true that is not evidently true, that is irrational by definition. So when a scientist starts positing supernatural, God, magic, however you want to describe it, that is irrational. They're not being scientists anymore just because they're working. In, yeah. And I asked you specifically if a scientist. Scientists could ever posit a scientific explanation included God, and you did in fact say that if they were working at some some levels of cosmology, no, no point ever, and I had to clarify this. So we will schedule another round. We will come back. We will agree that we're talking about scientific explanations that a materialist, naturalist, atheist has to give scientific explanations and that God does not qualify as a scientific explanation for reasons that I did not write. It has nothing to do with me or what I want to believe. Okay. Cool. I don't agree with you, but sure. Right. We will come back with you agreeing with me because you can't show otherwise. Got it? I don't, no, I don't agree with you. I yeah, mean, we, you will not be able not to show. Pigeonhole you me will, saying I agree with you on something I simply don't agree with you. About. You will have to agree with me when you come back and cannot show any science educational source giving any kind of excuse when we can use God as a scientific explanation because it doesn't happen, hasn't happened, won't happen, won't ever happen, can't happen. It's against the rules that I didn't write. Got it? Which was never my claim. Okay. So can we start anew with us already agreeing that God does not qualify as a scientific explanation for reasons that I didn't come up with, has nothing to do with what I believe, what I want to believe, what I say, or logical positive is, or any, any of that. It's just the rules of science, why God cannot be a scientific explanation, and that we are talking about scientific explanations here? I've said the entire time, God is not a scientific explanation. No, you haven't said that the entire time. I, I have, but, actually, and no, repeatedly. No, you, 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 you did say at one point that he was metaphysical, at right after you said that some scientists could use God if they were working in cosmology. Because I think some scientists can give abductive metaphysical answers for things. But, if the, but then they're not being scientists. But that, being just, scientific that's answers. the caveat I don't agree with you on. So you're basically saying... <laughs> All right, okay. So you want to disagree with me. Show me, the, show me the stuff. Show me that you're right. Come back and show that a scientist can give a scientific answer that includes God. And if you can't, then just hold the one position. Don't, don't tell me that I'm contradicting myself when you are. Because I'm you can't decide that's whether that's whether that's cosmologists can incite God or right. whether God is metaphysical. Just answer that God cannot be a scientific explanation. It has nothing to do with me. It's right. nothing I to never, do with what I want to believe. And you don't I get never, to, when I say I when I say that God can't be a scientific explanation, you don't get to say that you disagree with me because you're gonna have to you're gonna have to show the stuff, you're gonna have to show the data that backs you up or tells you that I'm right. And again, you're, if, if you only mean that God is not a scientific explanation, you're right, because I agree with you. Thank you. That's never, that's Thank never you. We could have, you know, we, we could have done this. We could have done this an hour and 40 minutes ago no, and begun. Because that's never been my claim. It's because every step of the way you go from scientific to, well, then any of these, any of these philosophical explanations, well, then they're not really doing science. And the only explanation, and, and again, I've no, said. that's not what happened, but fortunately we have it recorded. Right. A lot of other people have been able to see it. They can see all the running around. I've been consistent, and you have not. 
I've been consistent so, and no, you, you have not. not. So okay. when we are, when we, uh, we, we won't talk about now when we will reschedule it, but within, within the next say couple of weeks, first week of July, maybe. Um, maybe. that's July 4th, July 4th week. So uh, we'll, we'll have to talk about it. Cause I mean, if I, I don't, I don't know, we might have to postpone it or later than that because I've got July for me is crazy. I have to be in Kentucky in the first weekend. I have to be in, in, in San Antonio area in the second weekend. I have to be in Mexico for the third weekend. It's, it's it's nuts. I'm, I'm uh, it. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to do all of that. But anyway. But really fast. Can I give you a compliment? Please. <laughs> let me let me help your ego rip for for a second. It doesn't uh, really need any help. As probably as obvious. <laughs> but I, I I said it already. But I but I want to say it again in in defense of you because there are a lot of Christians who are like Ra's a jerk, and I think they mistake passionate disagreement. You think you're right. I think I'm right. You, you know, I, you think I'm question begging. I think you're question begging. I in no way take any of this as you being a jerk. Well, I, thank I, you. Can I respond to your beliefs and that's okay. Can I respond in kind? I have absolutely no patience for people who I deem to be dishonest. If I sense that you are insincere, we're done. Right. And I haven't yet gotten the impression that you are lying to me, as I have gotten from Ken Ham, from Ray, Ray Comfort, from Ken Hovind, of course, from right. the first moment. Uh, you know, people like that uh, are, are very clearly lying for money is what, you know, and, and, and political power and prestige and all of that, or, or what sometimes just to deceive themselves. But I don't get that impression from you yet. Well, I appreciate that. And hopefully it, it, it won't. I don't feel that about myself. So hopefully it. That impression will 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 stay accurate because I hope that that's accurate. <laughs> okay, so so when we begin, a couple of weeks maybe, uh, next time we whenever this whenever we do this, uh, uh, we'll we'll start off. We're talking about scientific explanations. God isn't one, and we'll, we'll I'll have to give you the the best scientific explanation we have. Yeah. Okay, and then we'll cover the other items yeah. on your list. And right. and and honest and honestly, just sorry, just just one more. Uh, because as much as this is interesting, we're, we're getting into to, to fundamental philosophical disagreements of worldviews and, and things like that. I would actually love to have a conversation. I, I would love to share the link uh, for, for my, my episodes and content that I've done uh, on, on Genesis 1, for example, uh, and just have a discussion about your... I, I know you're not going to agree with me. I know you're not going to think like, therefore, you know, oh, 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 suddenly the Bible's reliable or anything like that. But I would honestly love, and it doesn't have to be a recorded show or anything like that. I would love what you think of uh, positions that are that are diametrically opposed, even within Christianity, to people like Ken Ham and and, and those. I, I would actually love your 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 input after listening. It's a lot of content. I'm sorry. I know you travel maybe while you're asleep on a plane, or you can you can tune me out a little bit. But uh, I, I would actually enjoy your your feedback as someone who, if I can throw out something right now. I mean, I don't have uh, what, a, what a lot of other people today do have. I don't, I don't have the, the issue of purists. You know, I, I, I accept that I don't agree with anybody about everything. Right. And so I look for the, the things that we agree on, the, the things where you and I might be allies, you know, and, and where we might be able to get something done. That's the way I look at things. And it seems to be right. completely backward of the way most of the people in this country right now think of things. Right. I, I, I agree. I, and I, you know, I, I, I think we, we had a, a very good closing time where I think we, we both said, Hey, let's, let's, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to disagree about as ardently as we're going to disagree, but let's try to make this, let's try to make this country is let's get away from the, the hatred and, and arguing and yelling and name calling. And we can disagree at the end of the day, but I'm going to, we're going to have lunch together and we're going to hang out and we're going to laugh and enjoy each other's company. Very good. And that's a, that's a great note to end on. Thank you once again for being on with me and we'll try to do it again in July. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.